I'm Srikant, an entrepreneur just like you. You know, most of you are entrepreneurs, right? In fact, in India, we have about 51% of Indians are self-employed. On that note, let me tell you the story of the richest entrepreneurial couple in this world. My parents had a piece of land on the east coast of India, and their day and night income, uh, 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 labor income gives them just 20,000 rupees a year. My parents are not educated, nor they have all luxurious things in the world. Yet their life was meaningful and happy with family and friends until I came along. You know, uh, giving birth to a child is the happiest thing for every couple in the world, right? That to a male child. At that moment of time, maybe the term apple in the eye does not mean much for them, I guess, because nor my parents have seen an apple or I had an eye. There was this useless baby born without any eyes. What does the world think? Oh, there was silence all over because they have never seen an apple or they have never seen a baby without no eyes. Everybody started telling, oh, this baby, this is a sin. Be a, giving birth to a blind child is a big sin. So let us just smother this baby or put this baby die so that you can, you know, so that, you know, you can save the pain for the life. These are comments that has come up to my parents. In fact, even till today, millions of parents of the disabled kids do listen to these comments and smother the babies like the, uh, like the girl child, or get rid of them, or put them at homes, separating from the mainstream society. This tells you that the separation or the isolation of differently abled kids starts from the birth. On the other hand, my parents are, uh, showed utmost compassion, utmost care and love to bring me up on against all odds. This is why my parents are the richest couple in the world and I am the luckiest man. <laughs> compassion is not just giving a coin Opening your, traf uh, opening your car window at the traffic signal. It's the compassion is the way of showing somebody to live, show somebody an opportunity to thrive and make them rich. Richness doesn't come from money, it just comes from the happiness. Going for, as a child, I spent most of my time going with my father to observe the process of cultivation. I couldn't do much because I have these short legs and you know, I put up this leg and it goes half a feet inside in the muddy water. What can I do? Now I see anything in front. And you know, I was just spending time like an idiot. And you know, my father began to think, oh, you know what? When he was born, people were telling he can be useless. Maybe he could. And that is when he decided that I should study. <laughs> And that was the time he decided I should do something different because I don't fit in in their entrepreneurial model. You know this, in, in the entrepreneurship, we have this lean business model where you evaluate the enterprise and say how quickly this fails. And <laughs> in my parents' view, in their lean business model, I, my life was a big failure. Yeah? Now, you know, although I don't have schools in my village, I know my father put me in a school far away, and it was a big trek. Uh, it, was not diff it was not easy, crossing all these muddy puddles when it rains, or you know, vehicles trying to hit you, or uh, going through all these uh, sludges and things for about four or five kilometers. Uh, for a, even for you, it is difficult, right? And imagine how would, be, how would it be for a person or a child without no eyes. Anyway, I managed going there, but doing nothing. For about two years, I, nobody acknowledged my presence. Everybody said, oh, look, shit, this is a blind guy, so make him sit in the last bench. OK, in the, when the PT period comes, people just say, oh, no, you can't play with us because you don't see us running. Anyway, so here is the thing. So they, that was the time in my life I felt I was the poorest child in the world. Because this is not due to lack of money, guys. This is due to loneliness that has come to me over the period of two to three years when I was six, seven, eight years. 
you know, then uh, when, it, when the school was not helping me too much, you know, people thought and my parents and my relatives thought uh, I should uh, study somewhere with people of my own kind. And that's how I was shifted to Hyderabad uh, to a special school where I began my career as an outstanding student, getting all top ranks and, you know, playing ch played chess and cricket for India. <laughs> and, like, I had, uh, I had great memories of drawing uh, Great match, chess matches with women grandmasters and whatnot. Uh, worked with Dr. Kalam on various projects. Try and motivated around, <clears throat> motivated around 800,000 youth in the Youth Transformation Project, Lead India. Guys, this is not to brag myself, but again, doing all this, I have, I couldn't achieve much. When I finished my 10th grade, uh, you know, with over 90 percent, I wanted, I decided to take up sciences and study science in the AP State Board Intermediate level. To my surprise, people told me I can only take arts. Why is that? Was because I was born blind? No, I was made blind by the perceptions and the stigma of the people. <laughs> because I am blind, they said I, I cannot take up sciences. You know, somebody asked, hey look, I throw, throw a ball, can you tell me which direction does it go? Nor can you tell me that? No, right? We have this Newton's laws and the kinematic equations to solve. But that didn't convince them, so I was not given an opportunity. So I decided to sue the government. Rather than taking arts or choosing, you know, just worried about, just you know, moving away from the problem is not in my blood. Because I wanted to remove the loneliness of poverty and do something unique. So I stood against, sued the government, fought for about six months, then ultimately, there comes a geo from the government, uh, from the board of education. The government order reads, uh, "You are allowed to take up sciences at your own risk." <laughs> Underline these words, "at my own risk." What do you think? The even so, they thought this useless guy cannot even pass, though he got this government order, because we had no books. It was already November. We had no books. We had no material. We had no di accessible diagrams in the colleges. So anyway, I got a recommendation, joined a small college, and you know, made my mentor record all my textbooks into audio tapes, you know, worked hard, and, uh, and got about 98% in the intermediate. <laughs> right. so, this told them that a, a person with any difficulty can do anything. But, you know, but again, intermediate is over, holiday is done. You know, now time to go to IITs or MITs or, you know, Bitspilani or something like that, right? So I applied and waited, waited, waited. I never got an all ticket. Then there comes a letter that says, you're blind, you're not allowed to apply for any competitive exams. Ha! Huh. That's again a problem, right? When IIT didn't want me, I also didn't want IIT either. <laughs> because... How long can we fight? So I applied for top schools in the United States and United States and got into top four schools. You know, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, and Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> so I, I went to MIT as a first international blind student uh, to MIT in, in, the, in the history. I had to suffer in few areas, but started doing well. Then that was the time I, know, I began to think, what do I do? What do I want to do with my career? Maybe just get married? No. Just you know, work in corporate America? No. M do something to to solve these problems that I have faced. So many questions started bothering me. Why should this blind kid be made to sit in the last bench? Why, why should 10% of India's population who are disabled be? out of the economy, and why can't be the integral part of the economy? Why can't they work? Why can't they make their living? These are the questions that bothered me and got me back to India, giving up all the opportunities in the corporate America. And we built very strong support service platform to find, rehabilitate, nurture, and reintegrate disabled people or kids into the society, not out of the society. And we have supported over 3,000 students in education, vocational rehabilitation, sports, and much more. You know, what do we do for the employment? That is, where, that is when we, we built this company with over 150 disabled employees, you know, uh, grossing over a million in sales, valued over $8 million, 
And you know, you know what? Today still, we are on day one of our growth. So there's a long way, there's a long way, there's much more to do. So I would want to leave you today with these three lessons. Show compassion and make people rich. Remove loneliness from people and thereby you can remove poverty. Loneliness itself is the big poverty, so remove it from people, create better world, make people happy, so that you know, uh, we can create a fairer and cleaner world to live. And the third lesson is very simple, right? When you intend to do something good, you will be the first one to get benefited. Like you have seen in uh, all my encounters, right? I was the first one to get benefited. So do something good, create fairer and cleaner world for all of us to live in. Because the world, world looks up to me and says, Srikanth, you can do nothing. But I look at the world and say, I can do anything. With that, thank you very much. <laughs>